All right, this is Mr. Warrick. I'm just going to go through these notes real quick with you. Um, for the first day, this is just kind of a review. Uh, we have the A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. This is the Pythagorean theorem. We went through looking at all these to see if these were right triangles, what worked, what didn't. And then we went through this next slide looking at the Pythagorean triples. And down here in the uh, reader notes, you can see some Pythagorean triples and a couple more that are going to be on there. Then we talked about some different Pythagorean triples and the way that you can take like these 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, 8, 15, 17, 20, 21, and 29 especially, and like multiply them by 2, multiply them by 3, multiply them by 4, and still come up with Pythagorean triples. And the answer to that is very much, uh, yes, we're going to see some more Pythagorean triples from that. So then uh, we had talked about how they make similar triangles, talked about what happens if the Pythagorean theorem does not work, and how you can tell if the triangle is acute or obtuse based on that, and we worked some delta math. So now for day two, this is kind of fun. Uh, refresh your memory. What is the Pythagorean theorem? The Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. It only works in right triangles. I'm going to turn on this light real fast because I need to work on paper. Almost forgot. Okay, sorry. Here we go. Uh, so, we are looking at making similar right triangles. We're going to copy this illustration. Actually, if you go, yeah, no, yeah, that's good. So, uh, we have this interesting thing that's going to happen here. And this is kind of weird that it came from College Board and then they reworked everything. But we have this triangle here that's D, E, F. That is a right triangle. And then they ask you to draw an altitude that goes from point D over here to side E, F. Remember, an altitude is going to go from over here, and it's going to be at a right angle. We don't actually need it to find the area. We're just doing this to split some stuff up. When we do this, how many right triangles do we have? Well, this is a right angle here. So this is a right triangle. And then this is a right angle here. So this is a right triangle. And then triangle DEF was also a right triangle. So we have three different right triangles. And what do we know about these right triangles? Well... Um, this is a right angle and angle F has not changed. This is a right angle and angle E has not changed. And because all the angles of a triangle have to add up to 180, angle E plus angle F is going to be equal to um, 90 degrees total, which means they add up to this, which means this is actually split into those same two angles like angle E and angle F. So we know that all three of these triangles, the full size one, the medium size one, and the small one are similar right triangles. Okay. So then we're supposed to label the parts of this and they labeled this kind of weird. Okay. So I'm going to label it over here on paper. We have side A here. We have side B here. And this entire thing here, the hypotenuse is side C. Aside from that, we have X here at the small part, we have Y on the slightly larger part, and we have Z right here on our altitude, okay? Then what we're supposed to do is write the similar triangle proportions in all the ways that we can. So when we write this, uh, of the big triangle, A is the short side of the, um, so on the medium triangle, Z is the short side. So A is to Z as Z is to X. Uh, yeah, I like that. And then uh, we can also have A to X. These are all going to be similar. They are all the short side. Oh, sorry. I'm not supposed to compare all the shorts. 
So on it, it's uh, I'm going to compare the short side, which is A, to the long side, which is B. If I do that for the medium, the short side is Z, the uh, long side is Y, and on the smallest one, the short side is X, the medium side is Z. Then I've got the short side to the hypotenuse, that's A is to C, as the short side on my hypotenuse over here is gonna be Z to B, and then the um, short side to my hypotenuse over here is gonna be X is to A. Okay. Then I've got my long side to my hypotenuse. That's B is to C for my full size triangle uh, Y is to B, Woo. Y is to B for my medium sized triangle. And then uh, on my smallest triangle, I've got Z is to A. Okay, so um, when we find these proportions, we know that we can cross multiply them. And what I'm going to look for are ones that are going to make, um, I'm gonna look for ones that I can make that it's going to uh, make A squared and B squared, okay? So I'm not gonna use the ones here with Z. Uh, I'm gonna leave Z out of it. I'm gonna leave that, uh, sorry, th this right here, I'm gonna leave this out. I'm only gonna deal with the exterior here. So when I look at this, I've got, uh, oh, yeah, this one also has Z. So I'm leaving off this A over B. So I have A over C is equal to X over A. I'm sorry, I'm going to move this. Whew. I'm leaving off all the ones with Z because I'm not wanting to use the altitude in this. So I've got A over C is, is equal to X over A. I've got B over C is equal to Y over B. So I've got A squared equals X times C, and I've got B squared is equal to Y times C, okay? This is a uh, this is a proof, so we're doing some things mathematically here. Now, I have an inkling of an idea how the Pythagorean theorem works. I know it says A squared plus B squared, so I'm gonna add these together. So A squared plus B squared is equal to, if I know these are equal, I know that's equal to uh, XC plus YC. Okay, then if I know that, I can factor the C out of this side. And I can say A squared plus B squared is equal to C times X plus Y. I'm running out of room to write here. It doesn't want to stay in place. So if I look back at my original triangle, uh, X plus Y is the same length as C. So I can say A squared plus B squared is equal to C times C, which means that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So by knowing that these are similar triangles and setting up ratios and proportions and then leaving the ones with that center altitude out, we end up with this right here. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. We have just proved that the Pythagorean theorem should work, okay? So this is one of, I think there's four or five proofs. There could be more, uh, but there's a bunch of different accepted proofs that prove that the Pythagorean theorem works. So, um, yeah. Just kind of a fun thing for today. And then your work is going to be the handout 2.7 in Schoology. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. Ah, yes, 2.7. Uh, it's going to look like this. So we have this as a right triangle. How much is this going to be? We have this as a right triangle. What's going to happen here with the conversions? Um, we have this as a right triangle. 
what's going to happen with this. We're looking at TV size. TV size is measured on the diagonal. So we have, you guessed it, some right triangles to deal with, with the aspect ratio. If you wanna put a star here by number four, this is gonna be the most difficult one. If you get stuck on this one, it's really okay. Uh, it tells you about like your conversions to use on this um, so that you can work this out. But if you get a little stuck, that's, that's okay. We will go over this uh, when I come back. And then number five, the Pythagorean spiral. Just work the Pythagorean theorem. Use this and then the answer that you get here to use the next one. Use this information to get that answer for the next one. Figure out the pattern and answer the questions there. And have a great four-day weekend.